Yo, it's Soccer with Trust YouTube fam. We're two days away from the roster being dropped. And finally, all of the speculation will be done. We can focus on the tasks at hand. That is three big games in the World Cup. So hit like and subscribe. And let's get after it. Yes. What is up, everybody? And welcome to Clint Dempsey's favorite podcast at Soccer We Trust. I'm Jimmy Trash Can Cream Cheese, Conradino, also known as Jim Conrad, alongside Charlie, Chuck Wagon, Zimmerman Davies, and handsome Hollywood Heath Pierce. And we're going to make our predictions for the 26-man roster for the World Cup that is dropping on Wednesday before this show is over. But before we get there, I have two things to mention. The first thing is, okay, everybody, that don't stop watching the beautiful game once the World Cup ends, okay? And that is because Paramount Plus has everyone covered. There are big significant savings coming up right now. You can get 50% off annual plans. All right, so from November 5th to the end of the year, December 31st, use the code all year and go get your savings at ParamountPlus.com. All right, everybody, that is where it's all shaken. Make sure you use that code all year. The second thing I want to say is that all three of us were together for the very first time since this podcast started at MLS Cup Final in LA that LAFC won in penalties after a 3-3 draw. And I have to mention that that was awesome, us being together. And we took a photo. It's up on the YouTubes right now, if you can see it. What was more awesome was the goddamn game. What a final. Maybe the best MLS Cup final in the history of the league. And before I throw it over to Charlie Chuck Wagon Davies, who's wearing some amazing shoes during this 90 minutes or 120 minutes in LA, I predicted that it would end 2-2 after 90 minutes and go to penalties. And I was right. Prediction God status confirmed. Hi, Charlie. Let's, let's hear your thoughts on that game, though. Unbelievable. Yeah, I, I mean, the first half <laughs> wasn't the cleanest of games, right? But I would say traditional final, though. That's a final yeah. conservative. Yeah, I, I mean, F Philadelphia was not good in the first half, and only to go down a goal. It's it's actually pretty impressive that they were able to keep it close. And then the second half, they turned things on, and and that's when you thought LAFC were were not going to get a result in this game. You thought Philly was going to win the MLS Cup, especially when Jack Elliott got that third in in extra time i thought oh my god they really did it but it was it had to be it was written in the stars gareth bale comes in as a super sub gets the goal and they went on, on penalties and john mccarthy of all people someone who's got philly in their dna in their blood who's played for the club blood sweat and tears would, would do anything for the club they let him go he he's he survives just grinding it out makes his way the literally the unlikeliest of MLS Cup heroes, probably in history, Not to come off the bench, yeah, yeah, and, and two pen penalty saves, and and obviously beats his his hometown in the final, just and, incredible. And, and he's named MLS Cup MVP. And the reason for everybody that didn't see the game, and we highly encourage you to go check out the highlights. But the reason that McCarthy came in is because Maxime Cripo had to come out for a bad back pass from one of his teammates and slammed into Corey Burke and broke his leg, which is insane. Not only did he break his leg, he got a red card because he came out of his box and he had to do it. The guy sacrificed not only the opportunity for his team to win MLS Cup, which they went on to go do because of McCarthy's heroics and penalties and Gareth Bale's header, but he also sacrificed his chance to play with Canada at the World Cup, the first time qualifying in 36 years. So Heath Pierce, so many incredible storylines, but we got to give a shout out to Crepo just for yeah. his... The quick thinking and, and just trying to solve a problem very quickly to keep his team in it in that moment. Yeah, and I don't know if he thought he could get to that ball first or not, but either way, he was willing to put his foot out there. And again, when I when it went to when it went to uh three two in that game, and uh, Charlie said it, I probably each goal, right? You think about finals, you go, okay, they got their goal, shut it down, they're gonna lock it down, they're gonna do whatever it takes, and then a few minutes later, boom, it's a reset. Other team score, reset. And I would have bet every single time in the final with both these teams, the way that they played all season long, that once they got the goal that they needed, that it would have been over. And it wasn't. Right, so it was right, an incredible, right. incredible final. Again, I got short-term memory, but like one of the best, if not the best final uh, in terms of goals, action, things like that. Like Charlie said, it wasn't it wasn't all that pretty, but shout out to Maxime Cripo, incredible goalkeeper. Was for the first time in a long time, uh, LAFC had somebody that they could trust in, in the back line and again willing to put his leg out there literally and break it to, to keep their team and keep his team into the game what otherwise would have probably been uh, a match winner uh, was amazing and then yeah you look at this this photo if you're watching this on on, on YouTube right now uh, Gareth Bale 
I was just literally sitting right above where he, he went in to score and talking about how this guy had a bunch of chances throughout the year, hasn't really capitalized, got into good spots, kind of plays at one speed, wants the ball at his feet, and then all of a sudden, you know, was talking about how good he is in the air, but he hasn't really converted. And then all of a sudden gets up, leaps up, and, and bangs one uh, to really justify – uh, his his being there, right? And when you think about that through the lens of of him uh, him for Wales or him uh, against the U.S. in the World Cup, you realize there's a lot of things in his game that aren't what they used to be. But he can still at any moment uh, put his team in the lead if he gets one chance. He can bury it on you. So Charlie and everybody listening, and if you want to drop us any kind of comments, not only in the chat but on Twitter, hit us up at ISWT Pod there and drop us a follow as well. Did we just give Gareth Bale a ton of confidence going into the World Cup? Is that, that's like the worst plan of all time. What are we even thinking, Steve Trundolo, who I actually texted with after the game, offered up congratulations. He's a former guest of ours. I'm trying to get him back on the show so he can talk about how he won the double in his first ever year as coach of an MLS team, which is unbelievable. But, Charlie, talk to us about Gareth Bale and what this means for him. Because every time he puts on that whale shirt, that guy's another level. And we saw the evidence of what he can do. If he's not doing much, he's still dangerous. He, he'll always be dangerous with his, the ball at his feet or in the box just because he can absolutely peg a ball. And then you saw his leaping ability in, against Andre Blake at the near post, dunking on Jack Elliott. That, that was a phenomenal goal. But he, he's not as mobile anymore. So in terms of guys pressing you, you don't really have to worry about that. And then in terms of you know him getting around the pitch and making runs in the channel, that's not his game anymore. He, he is solely down the middle. And that's why I think when he came to LFC, there was a little bit of a struggle because – Arango was in form. So you're not taking him off the pitch and you can't play Gareth Bale anywhere else on that LAFC side because it's a liability. If you have Carlos Vela and Bale who aren't going to run and do all that work defensively, it, it puts you in bad positions and it can also unbalance you because of, of their movement, you know, whether, you know, they come both like to come in centrally. So then all of a sudden you're weak in those areas. I think for the U S yeah, he's coming in feeling good, feeling confident, but he's not fit. He's not match fit to play 90 minutes for three consecutive games, and they need Gareth Bale to be able to start and play most of the minutes in all three to get through. So I think from that standpoint, it's still it's one player who, who is capable of a, a moment of magic, but it's not something you should worry about if, if you're playing for the U.S. Yeah. I No, no, I agree. I think uh, he's got a good final pass if you allow him. And then same thing, he occupies space in the box as good as anybody right now in terms of his runs aren't hard, but if you allow him to go 50, 50 with somebody and get off of two feet, get up in the air, um, he can, he can punish you for that. But when I think about that through the lens of the national team and the setup and being protective of that, I'm not too worried about, um, about him, what, what he's going to do though, though, again, if he checks back deep, he does have the ability to slot passes, has a good range of passes and things like that. But like Charlie said, the main threat, the thing that he's famous for is no longer what I, I see as the threat in his game right now. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how he's utilized, where he's going to set up, right? I know that we uh, Wales have Kiefer Moore up top, six foot five striker. I think way, uh, Bale coming off of him. Uh, maybe, I don't know if he's going to start central and drift wide. Is he going to go wide and drift central? Very curious to see where Gareth Bale uh, sets up for Rob Page and his team. But uh, before we take any steps further, we had our very own James Bench, who is part of the House of Champions podcast in our CBS Sports family, who had the opportunity to talk to Eunice Musa, who did mention this Wales game. So before we take any steps further in this whole show, let's hear what Eunice Musa had to say to James. Of course, this international game against Wales, I know you didn't know it at the time, but you're going to be facing them again. Mm -hmm. Does that feel for you like it could be a... Uh, and it's obviously the opening game as well, a, a chance to to put a marker down, not for the whole tournament. And, and I mean, obviously it's going to be crucial because I think everyone thinks that there's a battle for maybe for second behind England in that group. How important is it going to be that you've tested yourself against Wales? And, and what do you think you learned from that game? Yeah, I mean, we've been waiting a long time for this game. And um, now that you put my mind to it, um, it's actually going to be, I'm going to be playing in the World Cup, my first World Cup game against the team I debuted against. So that'll be spe special, I guess, as well. And um, yeah, it's a imp very important game to start off this tournament strong. And uh, yeah, like a win, it's a must win, basically, you know. You have to you have to go out there and win that game to start off the tournament on the right, on the right foot. And I guess, I mean, it, it, you know, it could be a real challenge for you because obviously we don't know how Greg's going to line up. We don't know exactly how Wales are going to line up. 
But I think it's fair to guess that, you know, some of their strongest players, be it Gareth Bale, be it Aaron Ramsey, they're going to be in the same pockets of space that you are. Uh, mm -hmm. For you, is that something that invigorates you? You know, the, the chance to test yourself against veterans who have, have done it all and, and really shone at the on the tournament stage. Exactly. No, I love I love the fact that um, I get to challenge myself against these guys to see where I am. Um, so no, I love that because it's gonna it's gonna really show you know it'll show whether I'm I'm there or I'm not like you know show how, how much more work I need to put in or all of that stuff. So no, I feel like it's a great challenge um, to be able to play against those guys and. Um, when when you play against players like that, you even want to go even harder, you know, to be better than them. So um, hopefully that's what happens. <laughs> All right. So some interesting words there from our very own James Benj and Eunice Musa. Charlie, I'll come to you. Any anything there that you're surprised about with Eunice? I'm, I'm a, I'll be honest, a little bit jealous that James got that interview and not any of us. I'm just going to throw <laughs> no. it out there. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, he, he gave him pretty, pretty much softball St standard. questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. You know, if he was on our show, we would we would have give him the heat. So, <laughs> With a megaphone, uh, the drum, and some heat. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I, don't, I don't know what the answers would have been had he come through our show. But, um, no, I, he's, for me, you know, the, the player I'm really most interested in watching in the, this World Cup in, in terms of the midfield, which is our strongest core of our team. You know, what does that look like if Weston McKinney's not able to start that first game against Wales? I, I hope he is, but if he's not coming off an injury, then who who slides in? in that spot for us. I think it's just going to add more importance to what Yunus Musa does for, for us in the midfield. Reina, my guy, or bust. Reina or bust. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I don't, well, even, I, like, I don't want to hear anybody come up with this, uh, like, uh, double pivot Adams uh, Acosta type nonsense in a World Cup. Not, I don't, well, want, I don't I, want to hear especially it. Especially not for Wales. I yeah. we, The last thing I want to see is us go defensive, ultra defensive against Wales. Like, that's that's the team to send a message to England, to Iran, to the rest of to the teams in Group A, that we're we're here to play, that we're gonna attack, we're gonna have, you know, Yunus Musa and Gio Reyna so being underneath to support the front three. Christian Pulisic is a man on a mission, just playing like he's on fire, just hardcore runs, dribbling guys, playing one twos, and then Timo Way on the right, getting to the end line, whipping balls in. I, I'm I'm ultra excited for for that first game and the the last thing i want to see is us play defensive with two two double pivots two defensive midfielders <laughs> kellen and, and i know kellen's good as an eight too but if if we're playing two sixes which i don't think is going to happen anyways that would be you that never would be know chuck no you stop never it know. jimmy don't even I'm put it saying. out there well, well, why would we do it against Saudi Arabia? We did it against Saudi Arabia. No need to do it, but we did it anyway. I found that to be very interesting. Also, there's some news that Weston McKinney is back at training at Juve. Maxi Allegri said that he is hopefully going to be available for their last two fixtures before they have to go to the World Cup. So that is promising. Luca De La Torre is also another player that is apparently running. Uh, Celta de Vigo came out on their social media and saw... We saw some him running in the fog or whatever he's doing. So I'm very curious. We're going to get into our hey. roster selections and our, and our preview of that after the break. But I did want to go ahead, Heath. What did you want to chime in? No, I just think, you know, again, we'll, we'll get to it. And 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 I do think Luca De La Torre is on this, on this roster uh, just because of the fact that you could replace him if you needed to. That you're going to go with as much as you can speculation. You can make those changes if you have to. But <clears throat> hamstring injuries are tricky, man. And I've never seen... They said he was out three weeks. I have never seen a three-week injury be a three-week injury when it came to a hamstring. I have never seen it. If it's got a tear, that's a lot that got to work out. And running is one of the first things that you can do. But that that's not what yeah, the hamstring yeah. is ready for. Right. The hamstring is right. ready for that explosive. That's for firing, you know. And that's, that's right, a different right. I mean, thing than, than going for a jog. Ju just just ask uh, just ask Alejandro Bedoya. I mean that that was a quad, right? So mm -hmm. if if you try and play through it, that's the playoffs. So imagine the playoffs times a thousand because that's a World Cup. That's what everyone dreams of. You're going to push through. You're going to say you're fine. You're going to push through it. But realistically, with it, whether it's a calf, whether it's a hammy, whether it's a groin, whether it's a quad, those muscular injuries take time. And no one has time. That It's just games on games, World Cup. There's no break. You're either, you're either completely unfit 
or you're playing through a muscular problem mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. typically it, it's not going to end well because the muscle does go or you're compensating some something else goes and right, then right. now you're you're down to injury so uh, <laughs> but yeah it's yeah. interesting it it's you can probably sense a little desperation for him because he's got to be he knows he's got to be on the bubble at this point as to whether he can go or not and he's probably asking the social media team hey just just take a video of me running and see if that gets me on the <laughs> roster with Greg anyway I do want to let you know that if you want to catch the full Yunus Musa interview, it is on the House of Champions podcast. You can find that anywhere podcasts are found and on their YouTube channel as well. That is uh, one of our brother podcasts here in the CBS Sports family. Also, if you want to get a Yunus Musa jersey, and I am kind of sad that I don't have one already, head over to soccer.com and make sure you sign up for their Gold Club loyalty program where a $5 membership, everyone, will give you up to 10% off every order for life. That's pretty legit. I like that. All right. What, Jimmy, one Jimmy, question. real quick, real quick. Before yeah, we skip ahead, it, before ahead. we squeeze it. I don't want to squeeze it. You guys each, you can you can wear one jersey to the World Cup with a name on it. What name are you putting on your what name are you putting on your jersey? Conrad. And not, don't put, you know, I don't, I don't want a Davies. Don't tell me some Davies nonsense. I don't want you, you know, don't show up to the World Cup full kit wanker, Charlie. Like one player I, from this I can current pick roster. One. Yeah. One? One player. It's you're Tyler getting Adams. you're getting their name on your back. What is Tyler that? Adams. Tyler Adams. Okay. Okay. Jimmy? Yeah, I like the Tyler Adams shout is great. I I, I will probably Zimmer a, man. I'm gonna, Zimmer yeah, man. I'm going to put man. Zimmer in lower. I'm going to put Zimmer in lowercase and man in all caps, and it'll be Zimmer man. <laughs> How about you, Heath? Okay. I don't know. That's a t- I, I mean, I, I, it just literally came to my mind right now, and I was thinking about it. Okay, player that I know. I don't know. I might go Reyna. I think Reyna would be one. Weya would be a fun one to, to rock. I saw a bunch of uh, – I saw some Wea US jerseys in the in the stadium at MLS Cup. Um, so I don't know. That's 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 a tough I, one. I would have thought you were long sleeve goalkeeper. You're a Peppy. Yeah, guy. what happened yeah, to Peppy's number one stand? You know, I might have to yeah, go with Tim. True. I'm gonna write Tim Ream the dream on the back of mine because I think he's gonna end up getting on the roster. That's a little tease mm-hmm. of, of what we're gonna talk about after the break. But a question before we get there. Do you think that when, with regard to Greg Berhalter and for any national team coach, that they should be judged on what they do at the World Cup and the World Cup only, right? That's what matters. You can do, you can win Gold Cups, you can win Nations League. You no. can do, do, do you think you're you're on to something in terms of yeah. World Cup? In Jimmy, Maryland? Jimmy, we like, like what you're doing. We like what you're yeah. doing. Okay, we we, we like, we like where you're going. <laughs> however, however, you're never just going to judge a, a national team coach on how they do at the World Cup because what if they don't get there? You know, you mm-hmm. you got to watch look at performances and tournaments before that. Ultimately, you're graded. How people remember you is how how well your team did in, in the World Cup. But if you ask me, Jurgen Klinsmann, you think people are going to say, "Oh yeah, 2014," or they're going to go, "Man, he ran us into the ground and we didn't qualify for 2018." Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, because right. He had a successful World right. Cup, but he he, he was absolutely he should have went out on a high. End, he should have went out on a high. He yes. should have done Michael Jordan Game yeah. Six. You know? I don't know. I I, yeah. I also Meg, I think we're talking Meg about Durr, Meg Durr is coming in here with with some some fire today she's she's, she's fired charlie, up charlie wants bob judged by confederations cup and not the world cup I, he won he won hey he, he was won, good in the world cup good, meg he did. come on what are you he talking did. about sure i mean we, you know rob green helped us and and uh whatever it doesn't really matter but i'll yeah. say this i don't think that any national team manager should have the job for more than four years i think it's one world cup cycle and you're out uh even though i benefit yeah. i've talked about this before even though i benefited from bruce arena's second cycle in 2006 even then, I could see the players weren't responding to him in the same way that maybe they were the first cycle. I wasn't around the first cycle, but it just felt that way. And and I think a different voice is needed. And and uh, we saw it with everybody else. Bob does okay at the World Cup, yeah. goes out in flames. Jurgen does well, in the, you know, gets us out of the group, goes down in flames. It's just I think one and out. I don't know if you guys agree to that. I mean, I my my yeah, my my whole thing now is with this is I agree with you also in theory on that one, Jimmy, but looking at this group and how young it is and where it's going, it does feel like, I don't want to call it a golden generation because I think we're at the beginning of our generational growth of, of, of players. So I think the next generation is going to be even better than this one, but this is the first one where close in age, they kind of all come up through the same system. We have that lost generation of Charlie and a bunch of his friends um, that uh, that decided not to qualify for a bunch of our, our World Cups along the way. And we lost and that Olympics. generation. Now we have this new group now. Yeah, and Olympics and U-20s and U-17s and all kinds of fun <laughs> things. But, like, we're yeah, going to well, focus on, on moving for forward. <laughs> yeah, I'm blaming that's Charlie for sure. That's, um, the, that's the generation yeah. behind me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's like the 89s. Uh, that's we, like the hey, 89s we were in the sure. Olympics. We were in the 20s. We were in the 17s, 20s, Olympics. My generation was good. 
Charlie, I are can't you say at, anything. Are you, 80, for, are you at 87 86. or 86? Yeah, yeah. okay. We were, we were good. Yeah. I mean, everything, I, that's, I've got, everything I've got after a, 88. Listen, I've got another <laughs> I've got another issue with that whole thing anyway, because like I could either be like 18 going to the Olympics or I had to be an overage player, which doesn't make any sense, guys. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that it, doesn't, not, that it doesn't. Fair. It doesn't. Uh, yeah. But 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 I, I but I worry about if Greg Berhalter, as Jimmy says, gets judged on this World Cup. Right. And I'm talking about we go three and out three losses. That's a real you got to judge something about that. Right. Like depending on how we play or whatever, things like that. And then you look at the next cycle and you go, who, who, who can take this group to the next level? And there are some budding coaches that we see in the, in the comments, Steve Trundolo, other people like that, Jesse Marsh, others that they think could take it to the next level. So maybe I am sort of talking myself out of, out of allowing uh, it to continue. If Greg Berhalter um, made it or went on a run. Actually, here, a question back, Jimmy. How far would Greg Berhalter need to go to prove himself at the World Cup? To be That's a great proven? question. That'd be quite – I mean, listen. Get out of the group. Pro- Producer Alex says, get yeah, get out of the group. Yeah, that helps. We've done it. We've done that before, and then we keep these guys. And, not not and with, it, it not with a out. young group like this, Jim. If, okay. if they get out okay, of the group, Charles. considering, <laughs> considering <laughs> no World Cup in 2018, you, you completely throw out that whole generation. We say, we're going to uplift this new generation, give them experience. We got to get them to the World Cup. And mm-hmm. we all know the ups and downs of World Cup qualifying this 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 go around. They get into the World Cup. Everyone's like, England, Wales, Iran. They're going to get smashed by England. And we're I think we're already better than Wales and Iran. Obviously, that's not nothing's a given. But if he gets out, and they have a tough loss in that next round, that's success for me. It's what's interesting. Yeah, it's it's success. By some metrics, for me, I would like to see if we win the group and do it in style and then run either Netherlands or Senegal from Group A and get into the quarterfinals. Yeah, he can stay for a little while. But for me, I just feel like we've seen it. The players don't respond to the coach after a certain amount of time. And and we could argue that there's already been some signs that the players aren't necessarily buying in to what's being told to them in certain things. I'm just there's still a lot of speculation here, but I'm just saying that that we've seen little bits and pieces of it. And and when the World Cup starts, you put all that aside and just get out there and play. Like that's that all okay. that stuff's going to go. But once it starts back up again, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. I listen. If Greg does okay. well, Jimmy, then how about you this? Stay in the job. I'm just. I just. We've do, seen it historically. Think, seen it that that we shouldn't have managers for more than a four year cycle. Do you think that Greg Berhalter has grown as a manager? Because you talked about. I do think that there's some. Uh, there's tiny little slivers in this team of like, what's the game plan? How are we winning? Do we press too much? Do we press too little? Are we all on the same page with the players that we have and the system we're trying to play? Do you think this World Cup will show whether Greg has grown as a manager in terms of, right, okay, we tried the last camp, all, all, all failed. We figured out how to grind out a World Cup qualifying, very different than a World Cup. Now we're in this group play. Uh, do you think that's the judgment of how far I, he's come in terms of the game plan we put out? Because it should be clear when we put the players on the field, each game, on what the game plan is. I want to hear Charlie's thoughts on this too. I will say that I was there, that he was evolving. We'd seen some things, as you mentioned before, in the World Cup qualifying phase where there was some evolution, that he had to ditch some of the aesthetics that he was looking for to get out and get results. But when I saw Japan and Saudi Arabia, I actually was pretty disappointed that that is what we came up with and that we weren't ready with a plan B or a plan C so close to the biggest sporting event in, in the world. So, so I don't know for sure. I guess we're going to have to wait and see these three group stage games, which version of Greg Berhalter is going to show up. Cause I, sometimes I feel like he's trying to run the national team too much like a club team and it's not the same thing. Charlie, what do you think? I think you're, you're onto something. Uh, Greg Berhalter in the beginning, I I thought, whoa, we got, a long way to go in terms of adjusting, but the nation's league final beating Mexico and the gold cup, we were on this like rocket trajectory, ship, yeah, trajectory, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then there was that big stumble in the first game at El Salvador, the nil nil draw. And then uh, I just felt every time we played home, we, we took care of business and away. The excuse was it's an away game. They're young, you know, they're learning on the fly. I think tactically we weren't set up right on those away games to get a result. Because at the end of the day, all you need is get a, is get a result, not take an L, but get a result, win or draw. And and then in those friendlies, I was really disappointed. Now you could say, because I, ideally in a perfect world, Aaron Long and Zimmerman and and a lot of people were were playing poorly in the, out of the back. 
maybe it's a no more send it long or it's a substitution and be like, all right, I'm going to send a message off because this is just horrible right now. We're not playing good and I'm going to take you off. I know in his mind, he's like, I'm trying to build these guys up. I, if I take Aaron Long off in the 30th minute, where, where is his head going to be? And I don't play him the next game. You know, if, if I'm depending on him. Or you say, let me, let's me let try and build out of this because this is a good learning moment, although we shouldn't be having to go through that at this stage in, in the campaign. I'm hoping, I'm, I'm a, obviously an a optimistic guy, that he's learned <laughs> he, everything he's learned in the past few years. <laughs> he he's going he's going to implement make sure that things don't go south for that game against wales uh yeah um of course my brother chimes in i want ben olsen to be the head coach uh i think i think he he's in a position where okay we can't play on the back because no matter how how long i've trained with zimmerman and long in this this offseason camp with the national team that's not going to change anything. That we're we're playing with nine guys in a training camp. Sometimes we will schedule scrimmage, but that's not the same thing as playing in a World Cup. You've been off for a long time. I I think he changes the tactics and doesn't have it be so where everyone's got to take a touch and, and playing out of the back a little bit more aggressive. And when we defend, we defend in a middle block. We look to counter in transition. Be a little bit more direct. And then once we do settle into the game, that's when we can keep possession. Yeah, but right. early on. Yeah. I want us being smart and, and just playing forward. Yeah, well, I think we're uh, on the same page. And and if I'm not mistaken, U.S. soccer's buzzword or buzz phrase right now is only forward. So hopefully they can take only your tactics forward. and play yeah, forward. Solo solo we just got to play forward. All right, we're going to take our solo. first and only break of in soccer we trust. When we come back, we're going to give you our predictions for the 26-man roster that's going to be dropped on Wednesday. So do not go anywhere. Italy's greatest soccer. Is there anything this man can't do? Europe's most exciting title race. And there's the goal. The battle for the Scudetto is on. Stream every Serie match live exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. Welcome back, everybody, to In Soccer We Trust. I'm Jim Conrad here with Charles Davies and just Heath Pierce. And we are excited to get into our 26-man roster predictions for... This November night deadline when Greg Berhalter is going to go on national television and announce. Are you going to be there, Charlie? Uh, at the Wednesday? Yeah. Yes. Charlie's going to be there. So we're going to have Chuck Wagon on the grounds, hopefully asking the hard-hitting questions as to why Jordy P. Falk isn't on the team to Greg Berhalter. All right, let's start with our goalkeepers first. I'll go, I'll go first. And uh, Charlie, you're going to chime in. I got Matt Turner, Zach Steffen. And no particular order, except between those. I haven't decided who's going to start yet. I want to see who's healthy and ready to go. Matt Turner, <laughs> Zach Steffen. And then I think Sean Johnson Howard. is going to – yeah, okay, fine. Call me Jimmy Con <laughs> Howard Conrad. It's fine. I'll take that right now. All right. But so I'll, I'll all, give him my – and I got Sean we, Johnson. Are we all agreeing, though, on the are we all agreeing? goalkeepers? Yeah. I'm Sean all Johnson agree. also. Say yeah. aye. 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 Great. Okay, defenders. Let's go outside backs first. I have Serginho Dest, Anthony Robinson, Joe Scally. DeAndre Yedlin, and I get the sense he might bring in Reggie Cannon, but maybe Jimmy, he are you won't. serious? Five? Are you really going to go three right backs? Well, what the but, but well, five outside four, backs? Four, four right backs. Jimmy's he given us four five. right backs in this World Cup. Okay, Reggie Cannon's know, out. There. No, no. Okay, thank <laughs> Anthony you. Robinson. Okay. We got Anthony Robinson, Serginio Dest are our starters. Yeah. I'll give you my starters there, Mike. Yeah. I'm not going to be a coward on this one. I think Yedlin, yeah. Scally, and Dest and Scally can play either side. Yeah, and that's it. Is that right? Yeah, so Scally, yeah. Yedlin, Dest, and Robinson. That's four. And maybe Reggie Cannon. I'm that's, just going to throw that out there. Maybe That's Reggie the four Cannon. I got. Uh, that's the four, okay, four I've got. No four, Reggie Cannon. Same four. I, I but Scally's four. in. Four. Got no Reggie Cannon. Yep. I've got Scally and no Reggie Cannon. Mostly because same. of the fact that I think we need that cover if Dest has to go or if Scally has to go. It gives us something to work with there where I think Reggie Cannon is 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 a victim of uh, being behind DeAndre Yedlin and not versatile enough to and, and not doing to, well to last, be able to say I can – I can, yeah, I could, yeah. Could you exactly. could you see a, see a world where a cannon gets picked over Yedlin? No, I I don't. Okay, because because cannon. I has, think it's a Tim Ream type of like experience thing with Yedlin, where it's like he brings yeah. some invaluables that you maybe don't expect him to play, or maybe you do, but he he has some other tools that I think I think Reggie Cannon's a good leader. But when I think about experience, it's hard it's hard to have. I don't I I just haven't seen 
either of their performances uh, kind of eclipse each other, you know, or, or or rule the other one out. And so I would go with that that ex, that experience. So but Cannon's Jimmy, I'm, I'm interested. If you've got Cannon as your as you if you've got Cannon as your bubble on a on your potential fifth, I'm interested to see further down the roster who's yep, who's out. Same. Um, yeah, so we'll okay. get to that. We'll get to that. All right, center backs. I got Zimmerman. Oh boy. I okay. got uh, that's that's our superhero, and uh, we have Greg Berhalter's superhero Aaron Long in the team. Uh, Cameron Carter Vickers, assuming he's healthy, which I think he is. Uh, I got Mark McKenzie, and I have yep. Tim Ream. I, I, five. I, I th- I've got five center backs. Same. Yeah, same five. Zimmerman, Long, McKenzie, no, no, same, Carter same Vickers, five for me. Yeah, I've got. Okay, Zimmerman yeah, got... is the starter, and who is starting with him? Is it Long? Because they've had this this whole little camp of two weeks or so, or does he go with a guy who's nah. been playing? I go, I go Tim Ream. You think Tim think, Ream I starts? Think, I don't think Greg knows. They're going to play a game of FIFA to see. I who agree. Starts. I agree. I don't think he knows yet either. To be honest, I think you get that group together and then you start going gut feelings, which is absolutely batshit crazy to be in that situation at that point but here we are i do think tim ream starts though i'm thinking that i mean that's wild to me but like i i the more i think about just like simplify the game simplify the thing like charlie said let the game settle down fight for your space on the field and then try to try to play i'm going with tim ream in that knowing when to like i'm just gonna lump the ball up into row set as the uh british British. this guy was not (laughs) even in the conversation and now he's a starter well there's been some injuries you got chris richards miles robinson I mean, you're yeah. losing some some key guys that yeah. I think would have not to say Tim given given how well Tim's playing it, it gets oh, into that part of the conversation I, that that you have to if you're playing and it's undeniable how well you're playing and how consistently well you're playing you and have against to be the part best, of the conversation exactly you're, and you're, you're and you're captain and you got some leadership you got the intangibles right I think I think when we evaluate players everybody there's really five buckets there's the physical there's the tactical there's the technical there is the emotional and mental stability of, of you and, and how you lift others. And there's the intangibles. Are you a leader? Are, if things aren't going your well, are you still positive? Are you still trying to push other players outside of yourself? I mean, there's all these things that have to be taken into consideration when we're evaluating players. The IQ of the player. IQ falls into to the mental side of the game and emotions. I mean, all that gets factored in. And I think that Tim Ream is ticking a lot of those boxes right now. Is that you, Coach back- Jimmy? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we renamed it to Power Jimmy. Right. Guys, this is I'm gonna factor in my 10 uh you have attributes 10? that I'm looking at as a center back. Okay. <laughs> hey, stop hating, dude. Oh, I love <laughs> okay, it. Mid- yeah. Midfielders, I love it. midfielders. I got I got Tyler Adams. Maybe you've heard of him. Weston mm-hmm. McKinney. I got Eunice Musa, Kellen Acosta, who came on the show and then scored a free kick in MLS Cup final coincidence i think not everybody i got and i heard this on, on pretty good authority that greg told luca de la torre that if he was healthy he would take him how can you say he's healthy though I, i'm just saying i i'm just saying that's what i heard and, i think i agree yeah go ahead Jimmy. and so i think he, i think de la torre will be in if, if he proves that he he can do it i think i think if it came down to i, I mean i i even still think that there's room for malik tillman and maybe jimmy kicks him off with Reggie Cannon being the 19th right back on the roster. But <laughs> I, 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 I do think that when I think about selection, right, you cannot reverse. So if you think you can get that window, even if Luca De La Torre is match three ready for you, right, that's a month or so from now or even more than that. Um, like that where, is where I would say, okay, he, this guy can actually bring value. He's proven himself on the team. And if he can be a 100% asset for the team at some point in the tournament, I'm taking him. And then you can analyze it up up until whenever that last day is that you can go to your, your alternates and say, this guy's not fit to play. I'll switch somebody else out. But you can't reverse that, right? And and have him sit on the sidelines, be 100% fit, and then decide you're not you're going to take somebody else Pretty out. Good. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Chuck? Who's, who's your mid- midfielders then? Adams. McKinney, Musa, Acosta, and then I don't have another center midfielder. Knowing that Reyna can play there and Aronson. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. So, so uh, no Tillman what, for you. Is, 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 yeah, no Tillman's Tillman. there. Oh, Tillman's yeah, Till- in. Did you say Tillman? Sorry, I've already heard that. I didn't say Tillman because he, he's oh. playing as like a left a left winger. Got too, it. Got so, it. Got it. Yes. So, so Charlie's bringing eighteen strikers. Who's a former striker and and attacking player, and I'm Four. a former defender, and Real. I'm bringing ten. Okay. Okay. Let's get to, let's get to our wingers then. And then we'll leave strikers for last. 
I got Brendan okay. Aronson, Christian Pulisic, Gio Reyna, Timo Weah. I think Paul Areola is going to go. I agree. Same. I think he's going to go. Yeah. And but that's why we, even that we, we, that's, even that's five wingers. But but so I I guess Tillman would be in instead of Cannon. If if that's that's what I think Charlie's going with, right, Charlie? Yeah, my wingers are are Christian Tillman, Wea, Reyna, Aronson, Ariola. Okay, Keith. Same. Same. You're taking. You got Tillman. I got. I got Tillman. Um, <sighs> Man, the guy talk about coming out of nowhere. I mean, not yeah. that we, not that I mean, he was I, unknown I, quantity, I, but just like also for me, dude. I have not seen Tillman play great yet. But for the for the U.S. or see, for the Rangers. I, uh, for the U.S. I mean, for Rangers, he's had some great games. Um, but, but, but I still look at him and I, and, and then when I, when I weigh him against Roldan, when I weigh him against Morris, when I weigh him against, um, you know, anybody in that, that attacking area, Mihalovic, um, I just see something different. And I see again, somebody that I think uh, has the ability to, to, to do more and, and I think more impactful in the short and the long term for this national team. So he, he got onto my, my roster with Ariola as well. All right, I'm still on the fence. I think Tillman might be an alternate on this one. Strikers, I got Josh Sargent, Ricardo Pepe, and Jesus Ferreira. That is my 26. I, I don't think that Jordy P. Fox is going to get in, even though I would have him in. Don't yell at me in the comments or on Twitter at ISWT5. Don't yell at me. I would have P. Fox in my team because he brings something different and could help us in different situations. But I don't think Greg's going to go with him, and this is kind of how I'm leaning towards what I think Greg is going to go with. Uh, what are we saying? Let's go to our resident number nine, about the number nines. Go ahead, Charlie. Pepe, Ferreira, Sargent, and I'm bringing Pfock, and I hope he brings Pfock. I I just have this little little thing inside me saying he's gonna do it. Just just because you need a different profile. Uh, and he's yeah, you better wear for, a Pfock jersey he, then. You better be wearing it. Even yeah. if he goes, you better be wearing the Pfock jersey at the world. I, and you got you got to get Sibachu on the back just so I, you I, I will. I Pfock does play on an island when he's by himself. We're not. You can't guarantee me that we're going to be winning or 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 tied in every single match in the World Cup. I'm not even if, sure if how we we're going to get into the, into the attack in half at this point. You know, if, if just, we go I'm down sure. a goal and we need to throw two up top, who 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 else are you going to put up there? Just Pepe and and Ferrer because they've played together at Dallas. Sure, but let's say that doesn't work. Then then what? Like for me, he's playing every week in the Bundesliga for a top team. You know, he had scored a good amount of goals. Maybe he's cooled off a little bit, but he's still playing every game. So uh, it's hard for me to but say. De La Torre's out leave for him you. Off. De La Torre's out, Charlie. De La Torre's out for me because, one, he wasn't playing well anyways with, with his new club. Nor I mean, he hadn't all. settled in. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. played, what, he's playing 50, five minutes, three minutes, minutes here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no. And then on top of that, he's been injured. So yeah. it's hard to justify giving him a roster spot if he really couldn't even add anything. Agreed. Had, I, had I, you put I, him in the game. I just, I don't know. I think he does. In terms of having a different profile, I think he's got a different profile in midfield. Whereas Tillman, I think we have guys that can do what he can do and better. But but I do think he's not going to go. Which it's, it, I'm just trying to will it, will it. But I just don't think he'll be selected either. All right, what's that? Yeah. P Fuck? Jordy P Fuck? Or Tillman? P uh, Fuck. I think Tillman goes. I don't, I just, I don't think Jordy P Fuck goes. Okay, uh, but I, I'm trying to will it, so he's in, he's in my 26 yeah. man. Strikers. Yeah, see that's the thing is like I would like to see I would like to see P Fock, but I've got I've got Sergeant Ferreira and Pepe as my as my three strikers, and obviously, um, I don't I don't know if we mentioned Pulisic somewhere in there. Obviously, he's on. Um, um, I was that was at 25 by guys. This is this is what's crazy. As I, I wrote down, I was like, uh, you know what, these guys murder me whenever I I mess something up. I got to 25, and I was like, I can't find another player, and I was missing Pulisic on that <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're, you're like Graham Potter of Chelsea. You're also like got, that Thomas Tuchel as well. Like they also forget to put him on the list sometimes. That's unbelievable. Pulisic right there on my last, my last, <laughs> my last selection. Um, wow. But yeah, no wow. Morris, no, no. So we're saying, you know, obviously when you look across the players that aren't going to make it, right? Because it's it's pre it was pretty easy outside of Tillman, Luca De La Torre injuries, maybe Joe Can. Uh, I'm, uh, I love the Joe Cannon uh, shout, by the way. Shout Reggie out to Cannon, Joe Cannon. Joe Cannon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, um, you know, outside of that, you start to look at the players that were on on the outskirts, right? So you got PFOC, which, again, I would love to see, Charlie. I'm with you on that. Don't think it'll happen, but would love to. Um, um, again, Sammy Vines' injury ruled out from from that one. Probably would have been an alternate anyway. Um, Cannon, 
Horvath, unfortunate. Balogun hasn't committed. Mihailovic got injured in that camp. That really, really would have been his chance and never really got a chance to look in the national team. Vasquez, dip in form. Haji Wright, overlooked. Yeah. Didn't really prove himself. Morris, Roldan, Sands, Eric Palmer-Brown, and then you have Richards and Robinson injured. It, it hasn't really become this gigantic mystery to me unless unless there's somebody that you guys think is missing no. that's going to get that late shout no i don't know I, in some ways we're talking about players that i don't even know how important they're gonna they're gonna factor into this whole thing anyway i mean yes we're trying to fill out the roster and maybe they will play a role i think that 18 to 20 guys will play for sure but once we get to 21 to 26 who really knows i think uh maybe it depends on how deep of a run we go on i mean it's so subs, final right? thoughts guys five subs yeah yeah it's yeah, so I think Five you might seven. go. I think you'll go. I think you'll go deeper than than other. I think you'll get to twenty three players. You think twenty three players will play in this tournament? I think so. I, I'll say uh, twenty. I don't know, man. I mean, look, I I, I would have thought fifteen would play every World Cup, and I think it's been like it 20, never happens twenty three. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, which is wild. And with five subs, think, I think, think, about, I think more guys think, play. I'm just looking at the the roster of players put together from. The, the teams uh, across MLS, you know, the nine players. So like Gaga, Solnina, it's a good opportunity just to show showcase what what he what his strengths are, what his weaknesses are. I don't anticipate him sniffing th this roster, but it's it's good for him. But a player like Shaq Moore, who's probably hopeful that he can get into the to the to the team, rolled on and Jordan Morris, who have been there with with Greg. Like, is that enough? If they do well in these two weeks, is that enough for him to say, you know what, I'm going to go with Jordan Morris over P. Fuck or, no, or Tillman? No, those got to be alternate. No. Those got to be, those gotta be yeah. honest yeah, alternates yeah. of like, hey, yeah. I might need you. We don't know. We're seeing people drop like flies right now uh, across the world for, for injuries. You look at uh, Maxime Cripo, like you see some injuries like muscular, like Fonzo Davies and things like that. And then you see something like Cripo and you're just like, any anything's possible. If you look at like the Frankie Haydick and, and, um, and uh, Steve Trundolo in the past and the, like the injury cycle of like even leading up Chris Armas leading up to World Cups for like days before things change. Uh, I'm guessing those guys are pretty aware of, of where they stand. And I, I just don't see Jordan Morris um, after a year like this, you know, being in there. Anyways, my yeah. final thought is that that um, we're, 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 we're close. Um, we're and close. I don't think there's there's anything shocking. And I think they were right that it's I don't think cannons. Uh, I, I'll leave that one out. But I say De La Torre based on injury. Um, uh, Malik Tillman, um, those are the two ones with with PFOC being potentially the ro rotation into that. Yeah, Charlie, final thoughts for you. I just want to remind everybody that we have four podcasts this week. So there's going to be a lot of talking about the U.S. men's national team. And we're going to know a lot oh, more after lot. our next one. But what's your final thought, Charlie? Final thought is I don't think we're going to see any surprises uh, on this 26-man roster. I think it's everyone we are, are we have seen. Uh, whether you like it or, or you don't, I think we know who's going, and it comes down to that to that starting eleven, making sure that the center back partnership is as good as it can be, uh, given that the tactical game plan going forward against Wales. I'm sure the tactics are not going to be the same for Wales in England. So, if you're thinking about maybe resting some players against England so that they're fully fit to, and good to go against Iran, maybe that's an opportunity to to f play with some some different guys. Or yellow but, card issues, yeah, yes. Ultimately, I just want to make sure that we have our guys healthy, right? And then it's the core group that we know we're going to contribute in these matches. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm excited. Can't wait to see the the 26 that we already know who they are. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, yeah. Since you say no surprises, I'm a little sad because I was maybe thinking DeMarcus Beasley could get in there for his fifth World Cup. You know, I'll get a little shout out for Bees. I mean, what's, why not throw the 26 spot at Bees? I mean, Heath didn't even have Pulisic in his top 26. All right, we are done with or Turner. Soccer We Trust. <laughs> or, or, or Turner. We're done with In Soccer We Trust for this episode. When we see you or you listen to us next time, it'll be after the official 26-man roster has dropped. Our very own Charlie Davis will be on the ground reporting live from there. Hopefully, you can get us some good guests or doing something fun, right? You can get, you can have, find your own trash can to use as a tripod, okay, <laughs> yes. Charlie? That is your big, your big thing after I did it at Old Trafford when I went to the Man United Liverpool game. All right, we're done. Thank you so much for listening and watching. On behalf of Producer Des, Producer Alex, Charlie, Heath, and myself, we will see you next time, and it is going to be awesome. Later! Thank you.